Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Um, sun's come out, so we're going to grab the opportunity to make a video quickly. Um, I just thought I'd show you my new arrangement for my brushes. Um, yesterday evening I had a clearing up session and I decided to sort them all out, all the ones that I use anyway, and I found these two um, holders in a drawer somewhere tucked away where I put them when I didn't feel like using them. So I've reassembled them and I've put the all my brushes, the red ones and the black ones, into them so that I can now see exactly what I've got and I might actually be more efficient now. Um, good idea to have something like that. I do tend to mostly use um, mugs and jugs and things like that for my um, uh, tools. But uh, to separate them like that, I know some people say you shouldn't store them upside down like that, but I put them away when they're dry anyway. So I let them, when I've used them, I lay them down on a piece of paper towel or on my beer mat towel and I let them dry and then I put them away standing with their heads up like that. Anyway, just thought I'd mention that because I was quite pleased with the amount of tidying up I'd managed to do yesterday. We did a whole bunch of housekeeping in the in the studio. So today, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So I'm going to play with a different paint box today. We've done an awful lot with the Kuretake ones. And um, just to make a change, I'm going to open up my Paul Rubens set, which was kindly donated to me by Paul Rubens of China. And um, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I am going to limit myself to using these six colours at this end of the swatch. So that'll be basically Prussian blue, cyan, brilliant green, may green, permanent green and olive green, yellowish, and possibly English red or one other contrasting colour. And I'll choose that when I come to it. That's the basic idea. So I have to, when I start painting, I have to have something in my head, otherwise I'll just end up, I don't know, getting frustrated or something. Um, so I have something, even though I might not end up actually doing that. Okay, so here we go, painting without any preconceived ideas or plans. Let's start. This is uh, phthalo blue. I'm painting on hot pressed paper, cold pressed paper. This is um, Lavis Fidelis, um, which is by uh, Arches, I think, I think. And I'm just going to put colours in uh, and let them do their thing. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? That's a lovely green and it's, it's blending. And this kind of paper, it blends differently. I, this is my practice. Okay, I'll show you this here. Um, on This is just copy paper or something similar, you know, sulfite paper. And it has a completely different effect when it hits the paper, the paint. Um, when you're on cold pressed paper like this, it, uh, it behaves differently. So that's my first circle and we'll do another one. You know how um, Monet, do you remember Monet? How he painted for the last, I don't know how many years of his life, he got stuck with water lilies and his flowers in his garden and he did nothing but paint the same subject again and again. I think you could get like that with circles, couldn't you? You could say, well, why do I need to paint anything else? Because at the end of the day, um, you know, it's... Uh, well, it's all about colour, and if it's all about the process rather than the result, then what does it matter what you start off with, you could say. So you just do your circle or whatever shape. You could do squares, of course. 
and let things flow and forget about all your worries and your woes. Wasn't that a song? Pack up your troubles in an old kit bag. That was it. I remember that from family favourites and... Uh, what was it called? That programme that they used to put on the radio in the mornings when everyone was supposed to be at home doing their housework. Um, well, not work as playtime, that was something else. I'll think of it in a minute. Housewife's Choice, I think it was. <laughs> People from England will remember. Yes, those were the days. Those were the days. Yes. Oh, sun's come out again. I have to take the opportunity to mention that because uh, there's not much else I can say at the moment. I'm just putting, I don't want to put that there, I'm going to put that there. Just putting uh, uneven circles using a limited palette of Prussian blue, cyan, brilliant green, may green, and permanent green and olive green in a random fashion. I, I like this bright green. You don't often get the opportunity to use that bright green, do you, when you're painting landscapes or things like that? Because, you know, it says in all the books, it's not very natural colour, so don't use it. Why not? Why not? Wouldn't it be a different world if the, well, if the grass was that colour? I mean, wouldn't that be fun. And this, when you're doing this, you'll see all the subtle colours come emerging out of um, your primary strokes. You know, this, this is an absolutely gorgeous green there, isn't it? And uh, you can just add lots more water and let things flow like that. And one of the best things that I've seen done is to just drop water in to these circles and let it push the paint around. You'll be surprised what might happen. The drops won't go outside of where you've painted. I'm going to put something in the middle of that too, the colour. Just let that run around and here too. And if you feel you've got too much and it hasn't worked quite the way you wanted it to, you can always lift it out with a bit of tissue like this. I'll just show you. I think this probably might work fine, but it might not. So we'll lift it out a little bit. For this kind of thing, you definitely need to have your five-year-old hat on. Absolutely. So we'll put a nice olive. Whoops, was that a bird? There are eight hawks on the window. The birds do not need to fly into the window. So we just let that draw up and down. You use plenty of water, you get lots of much more subtle blends and you start to get planets, you know. Um, let's use that colour here, shall we? A bit more of this one. And then we want to come over here, I think, perhaps with a bit more of this one. I say I think, but it's probably best not to think too much. And... Uh, Probably could do with filling in some of the gaps so that it goes closer to the 
paper top and edges of the paper, maybe. I haven't done that before. I think that's sort of putting some behind kind of thing. Clocks went forward in here in France last night. In here? Yes, in here too. We put our clocks forward. So we're all out of sync at the moment. Don't know whether, what time of day it is. We've got some areas here where we've got backgrounds and that's something you don't get really when you use the Kuretake paints, which is one of the reasons I like them. You don't get the backgrounds quite so much, which is something to consider. And uh, yeah, I know it looks pretty awful at the moment, but it's fine, I think. <laughs> I'm going to uh, dry it in a minute and then come back and do the next thing. So here we have a background. I think that's probably the most flattering thing we can call it. Um, lots of lovely greens on there. And I'm going to do something a little bit, um, what's the word? Um, back to front, back to front, yes. So I have a background with lots of color in it and I'm going to take a white pen. Wish me luck. I don't know whether this is gonna work or not. This is a Posca white um, pen. Uh, it's a 0.7 millimeter pen that is bizarrely called the PC1M, bullet shaped, um, and it does uh, paint once it's oops once it's got started. It'll do white lines. It doesn't actually immediately jump into action. Funnily enough, I've noticed this. It starts off kind of white. And um, so I'm going to have to give it a good shake first and try it out on something that doesn't matter. Um, hang on a second, I'll find something that's got some colour in it. Is that going to work yet? I should have done this before. I think that's, that's it, it's working now. Um, Okay, so what I'm going to do is a design of leaves on here and I'm going to draw them as if this was a pencil. I'm going to draw the leaves in place on here in white. Okay, and uh, so this is not uh, rocket science, as you probably realize. So this is my basic uh, I think I've done a few of these before, haven't I? Basic branch with some leaves on. So we start off with one of those to get us in the mood. And uh, they, get, they tend to get small. I have an <clears throat> inability to not be completely realistic, to be somewhat less than unrealistic sometimes. So they tend to be smaller at the top often. So we'll do another one here and we'll do these ones 
a little bit more rounded and um, sort of opposite one another. Sorry about the scritchy scratchy sounds. And uh, I'm not thinking too much about um, how this is going to be done. I'm just sort of heading for it. I put some little stems on these ones. I'm not putting any veins in at the moment. Okay, and then perhaps we'll do here um, maybe one like this. All of this is such good practice when it comes to control of the pen and uh, developing, you know, good muscle memory so that you can trace over a line without going off. It all seems very difficult at first, but eventually you get the hang of it. So we'll do a nice swirl there like that one, shall we? And do some pointed leaves like this. And um, over here, this is a nice colour here that we've got, isn't it? Let's put these ones longer and thinner, perhaps. And then maybe, um, uh, maybe we'll take one up the back here, going behind, and perhaps that can have really long leaves. we could have coming in from the side we could have some smaller ones maybe one coming down from up the top here and um, well, there's a nice space here we could put a something with some berries on it couldn't we here Let's say okay, and uh, well, there we are. That's uh, that's some leaf outlines, and now I have to decide what to do for the next step. Oh, well, we could have some some more little ones, I suppose in these spaces, if there are any spaces. Have one coming down from the top here. Right. Okay, so we're gonna carry on with a bit of uh, mental serenity here, or whatever you like to call it. Um, I'm going to open up my Colero pearl colors, gold and silver, made in Germany here and I've put some water on them so they've softened up a little bit and then I'm going to just pick up some some gold. I'm going to try and do this reasonably loosely and just paint the outlines. It's just uh, I don't know why but outlines seem to be a thing for me at the moment so just not they're not uh, tightly following the line of anything, just leaving it kind of loose and see what happens really, see how it looks. And uh, 
come up the middle there as well. These are different colours, these golds. Some of them are a bit darker. Um, so this one, for example, is darker. So you can kind of mix them up a bit. Perhaps put a darker one there. And the, the paint underneath from the Posca pen doesn't interfere, seemingly. We could make them a bit wider if we want. Perhaps we could have, you could sort of have half of it solid and half of it open if you wanted to, something like that. And then we won't do all of them like that, but maybe, I don't know, one of the ones over here, we'll do that in gold as well. solid and maybe that one too but the nice thing about doing them open is that you can see what's behind can't you it doesn't cover up the nice um watercolor effects that you've put in This is kind of silver. You could use, uh, you could have done this, I could have done this with a silver or gold pen, I suppose, but the lines would have been much thinner, wouldn't they? Try not to get it hand on it and smudge it. It's not a good idea. And I'm wondering what to do for the rest of the leaves. I'm wondering if to use, whether to use um, brush pens, watercolour paint, brush pens, or at least I think they're paint, maybe they're ink, I don't know. I think we might do these areas down here in gold. Maybe these ones up here, little ones. You can leave some of the white lines showing underneath. Just go down the middle like that. And I was woken up in the middle of the night last night with a, by a thunderstorm of all things. It's March, it's France, it's not meant to thunder and lightning in the middle of the night. I sometimes wonder whether we were moved somewhere and we weren't looking because the weather here doesn't seem to have anything to do with what it used to be like. Um, okay. So I'm, I am definitely thinking that that's enough of the metallics. So I'm just going to grab a handful of greens and blues. And these poetique. I've got them sorted into bunches of greens. So I know that most of these are going to be somewhat in the same colour family. And now we have to decide what we can do with those. So uh, da -da 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 -da. I wonder whether a bit of blue would be a good idea. What do you think? Oh, that's mauve. That's probably not quite the right thing. What about this colour green? 
Okay. Um, Nice contrast there on that yellowish colour underneath. The thing with this kind of work is, it, you know, you can't, you don't want to rush it. There's nothing worse than sitting down to paint and thinking, oh gosh, I've got to get that done. Because luckily most of us who are retired, we don't have that pressure. Okay, so I'm going to risk it and put lines in side these shapes. I don't know if this is going to work or not. I suppose if you go over, you can go over the silver and it becomes metallic blue. Well, that's interesting. I haven't thought of doing that before. Not sure if that's a good idea or not. But how else are you going to find out if you don't try it out? Let's find another colour. What about some green? There's no reason why you couldn't do this with paint. You don't need these pens. Essential. These ones we could do a bit more delicate up here. Just use the tip of the pen. And then that's harder to do with a paintbrush. But you can you can do it. I mean with a traditional paintbrush. Thank you. 
And the dog is snoring. So funny listening to dogs snoring. Well, that's that one. Um, and of course, you can always take your white pen. And here we could do more lines if we wanted to on these ones to finish them off. I suppose we could call this reverse colouring in, couldn't we? Where you do the background and then you basically work on top of it. I'm going to go around these circles, straighten them out a little bit. Okay, so then I think we need something for this one up here. I wonder if we could go for... That's too pale. Uh, maybe you know, blue would work. Could work. And I think the dark blue probably would be quite good over here as well. And um Should we do in here? Should we just do some fine lines in dark blue in those, shall we? I think we probably want some berries over here as well. Something like that there, maybe. I don't know whether this one needs a little bit more dark, perhaps. Something like that. And uh, perhaps we need some berries over here somewhere. Perhaps here. Okay, and you could um, 
some people, when they do this kind of thing, they add other what you would call additional shapes in a shadowy colour in the background, and we could do that. So, for example, with this light green, we can come in with a spiral or two over here, perhaps. It always dries a little bit lighter. Spirals are a very satisfactory shape. I think they uh, they can add quite a lot. Take it over where two colours join. And then once you start doing that, quite often you'll feel that you want to add more leaves, so more branches. You can do them in a complement, in, not complementary, in a matching colour to the background. So like here, that green goes over there nicely. And uh, you could have a few more down here, perhaps. And what you're doing then is you're just building up texture. giving everything a bit more context. And um, try another colour. It's a bit like they say about getting old, it's not for the faint-hearted. Well, reverse colouring in isn't for the faint-hearted because once you've gone too far, you've gone too far and that's all there is to it. So, but you know, what is there to lose except a piece of paper, as they say. Could try some in a yellowish tone like that, but you can't see very much but you know it's there in the background and I suppose if you if there's something you don't like you can always change it I'm not completely convinced about these ones here. Of course, it's always the biggest ones and the most important that you feel. Uh, I'm not sure about that. But uh, what you could do if you don't like what you've done, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over it. I am going to get my Kuretake set because I know that that's pretty much opaque. Find a brush buried here. And uh, don't know what colour to use. So we'll just put this on to sort of even it out because I think it was just too much.
And we'll see what happens when that dries. That's going to be a little bit uh, lighter, probably. Not much, but a little bit. We can reduce the amount of metallic if we feel that we've gone too far with the that. Right, okay, I think I'm going to let that dry and then we'll see what we see. Okay, so that worked, that's fine, that's dry now, and I'm just coming back in with the Posca pen and I'm going to put some dots over these leaves. Um, because why not? I haven't got any dots anywhere else. So I think we need a few dots to give it a bit of a lift like that. And I uh, don't think we need anyone any any anywhere else. We could put a few veins in these, or we could sharpen up the edges a bit. But I quite like those like that. It's a little bit rough and ready. And uh, yeah, I think that'll do. Maybe we could we could put a few dots on here too, but they won't show up very much because it's gold. We don't want to go mad, do we? So there we are. I'm going to leave that there. Hope you enjoyed that little uh, meander through the back recesses of my mind. Uh, not very chatty today, but uh, you know what it's like on Sunday. Yes, and the clocks have gone forward. Um, so I'll let you go and hope you enjoyed that, as I said. And don't forget to subscribe and so on and so forth because we're nearly at 100,000. I'm not going to say much about that because in the future, when you look back, we'll be nearly at a million and, you know, so... Um, but anyway, that's where we are right now. And uh, I wish you a happy Sunday and I'll see you again soon. So bye for now, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>